A very good morning, students. After a long gap, I have come today with a very interesting topic. That is the theater of absurd. My dear friends, as a painter picks up his brush and fills the canvas with colors, or a musician binds the words in the rhythm and makes a string of melody while a poet pours out the words in the form of a lyric. Even Aristotle has talked about fine arts because I am teaching you theater is related with the fine arts. Aristotle also means by fine arts painting, music and poetry and he opines that every art imitates objects of life. Consequently, it is called a reflection of the society. And explains, to quote Aristotle, for as there are persons who by conscious art or mere habit imitate and represent various objects, through the medium of color and form, or again by the voice. Taken as a whole, the imitation is produced by rhythm, language, or harmony, either singly or combined. Likewise, very chiefly, theater reflects society, and society glimpses through literature. Hence, its aim becomes grimmer and valuable. On the one hand, it maintains social values, moral values, and on the other, it brings catharsis of emotions and provides pleasure. The postmodern drama observed a great change within the theatrical culture resulting in the new form of theatre, that is, the theatre of the absurd, expressionism, impressionism, and experimental theatre. My class today is based upon this postmodern drama, which is known as the theatre of absurd. Martin Eslin, defines the term absurd for the first time. And he said that absurd originally means out of harmony with reason or propriety, incongruous, unreasonable, illogical. This is what he said about this absurd, what does absurd means. And then using UNESCO, also writes in an essay on Kafka, to quote Eugene Ionesco, absurd is that which is devoid of purpose, cut off from his religious, metaphysical, and transcendental roots. My dear friends, if you will start to observe our modern life, our modern life is no less different than what Eugene Ionesco has to say cut off or devoid of any purpose, cut off from our religious, metaphysical and transcendental roots, we have become absolutely alien to this world. Now friends, the term is applied or to a number of works in drama and prose fiction, which have in common the sense that the human condition is essentially absurd Aaj ka jo humara samen, jis tarikhe se hum log reh rahe hai. That is completely absurd. It's absurd. If our condition is absurd, so is the literature, so is the theater, so is the representation. If our life is meaningless, so is our writing. Because we say that the literature is the mirror of society. So, completely the postmodern life has become absurd. Our literature 
have also become absurd. So I'd like to repeat, this term is applied to a number of works in drama and prose fiction which have in common the sense that the human condition is essentially absurd and that this condition can be adequately represented by only in works of literature that are themselves absurd. With the advancement of new theatre in 1950s, a change came into the motif of the plays. These plays reflect meaninglessness of man's existence in the society, utter confusion and despair in the world. No values in life, no love in relations, no sensitivity, no spirituality, homo sapiens without knowledge and without intelligence we have become as so. That is why and uh, with the advancement of the new theatre in the 1950s, this change was also noticed in the field of plays. So, let us go uh, into a bit historical background of this theatre of absurd. Both the mood and dramaturgy of absurdity were anticipated as early as in, 19, in 1896 itself in Alfred Jarry's uh, French play, Poubi Roy, Poubi, the King was the name. The literature has its roots also in the movements of Expressionism and Surrealism, as well as in the fiction written in the, in the 1920s by a French Kafka, as for example, say, The Trial of the Metamorphosis. Those works already had written the process of the theater of absurd. They had anticipated a kind of place that emerged in 1950s that are known as theater of absurd. The current moment, however, emerged in France after the horrors of World War II. World War II gave to this universe a world full of orphanages, full of unemployment, full of widows, and for the a bleak world and a bomb with the bombshells, ashes in the sky, deserted, uh, deserted villages, nation. So the current moment, however, emerged in France after, after the horrors of World War II as a rebellion against essential beliefs and values of traditional culture and traditional literature. And after the 1940s, however, there was a widespread tendency, especially prominent in the existential philosophy of men of letters, such as John Paul Sartre and Albert Camus, to view a human being as first as an isolated existent, and second, as if we are cast into an alien universe. And our universe possesses no inherent truth, value or meaning. So these three assumptions were there in the existential philosophy that they assume that human beings are an isolated existent. Abhidhiki, with the Android phone in your hands, it is very easy to understand during COVID also. Were you working in like in a group? No. We were feeling as we are an isolated existent. There was no, everybody was confining in himself, shutting the door, closing the door, who is going to die, nobody was going to bother about that. So this was just a glimpse of this existential philosophy. We feel as an isolated existent, as if we are cast into absolutely an alien universe. Nobody knows. Mahine din ek building mein rahe hain, saamne ka darwaza khulta nahi hai, jante nahi ki kaun rehta hai. Kis ki khushbu badal se guzar rahi hai, pata nahi hai. Because we have absolutely become uh, existential. Our, and our universe possesses no inherent truth, no value, no meaning. And we represent a human life in its fruitless search for purpose and meaning. And as an existence which is both anguished and absurd. We don't know. Subhas, we go to sleep, we go to sleep, we don't have any purpose. 
फालतू के समय कैसे हो बेमतलब की कॉसिप्स बेमतलब की कॉन्वर्सेशन यही एब्जर्विटी सुबह उठे और शाम को खाली बेड पर गए बीच में क्या हुआ देर वॉज ऑल साउंड देर वॉज नो मीनिंगफुल कन्वर्सेशन देर वॉज नो पर्पज इन आवर कन्वर्सेशन वी जस्ट वाइल्ड अवे आवर टाइम इट हैज हैपन बिकॉज देर इज अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट वी हैव नथिंग टू डू दिज ऑल मैटर्स आर देयर कैन फाइंड इन दिस थिएटर ऑफ एब्जर्व एस कैम सेट इन द मिथ ऑफ सिसिफस इन पब्लिश इन नाइनटीन फोर्टी टू दिस वर्क He writes, "Come, rise! In a universe that is suddenly deprived of illusions and of light, man feels a stranger. He is an irremediable exile. This divorce between man and his life, the actor and his setting, truly constitutes the feeling of absurdity. We are living as." as as if we are our life is cut off from ourselves we are living a life there is no life in it we are trying to every day we are watching motivational videos just to get a motivation and just to get ourselves rooted in our life because there is lot of devoid of liveliness in our, from our life we have become back to hollow that is why ts elliot hollow man is there He has written that. So this is what, or as using the UNESCO, the French author of the Bal Soparno or the Lation, in my, published in 1951, and the other plays in the theatre of the Azad has put it, to quote, cut off from his religious, metaphysical, and transcendental roots, man is lost. I'm Koge. All his actions become senseless, absurd, useless. Ionesco also said, Ionesco also said that that in commenting on the mixture of moods in the literature of the absurd, to quote, people drowning in meaninglessness can only be grotesque. Their sufferings can only appear tragic by derision, by disdain. To quote. Now Samuel Beckett, another Irish gentleman who got the Nobel Prize in Literature for writing *A Goddard*, born in 1996 and he died in 89. He is the most eminent and influential writer in his board, both in drama and in prose fiction. Was an Irish living in Paris, who often wrote in French and then translated his works into English. His plays such as *Waiting for Godot*, published in 1954, and *End Game*. published in 1958 project the irrationalism helplessness and absurdity of life in dramatic forms that reject number 1 realistic settings number 2 logical reasoning or a third a coherently evolving plot jitne bhi dramas hum waiting for god of the dekhenge usme there will be no realistic settings kyunki hum log a life us setting mein hai hi nahi इसलिए सेटअप भी जब हम थिएटर का करते हैं तो रियलिस्टिक सेटअप नहीं रहता देर इज नो लॉजिकल रीजनिंग इन द कन्वर्सेशन इन द डायलॉग्स दैट हैपन बिटवीन द कैरेक्टर्स एंड देर इज नो कोहरेंटली इवॉल्विंग प्लॉट एक कोहरेंटली इवॉल्विंग प्लॉट में बिगनिंग मिडिल एंड एंड होता है ऐसा कुछ नहीं है थिएटर में एग्जैक्ट देर इज नो कोहरेंटली इवॉल्विंग प्लॉट इन दैट एज फॉर एग्जाम्पल सिंबल बेकेट्स एंड गेम आई वुड टेक फॉरवर्ड सम ऑफ द डायलॉग्स Or there is a very short and and delinked dialogues between characters. As for example, there is a character Hum. He says, "Now these days I shall show my eyes to you." And he takes pauses. It feels that they have both gone white. He pauses, and then he asks, "What is time?" Then clock says, "The same." क्या टाइम हुआ है? उतना ही, उतना ही बजा है जितना बजना चाहिए. That kind of conversations. Then, then hum, that, that character says, moving towards the window, right? Says, "Have you seen?" "Tula B S I have." How is that? "Kaisa hai wo dekhne?" Zero. See, this is this is the conversation which leads you to leads you from nowhere to nowhere, 
एंड दिस इज द एबिलिटी फॉर कन्वर्सेशन अब अब नहीं किसी दोस्त से दिन भर जो बात करके घर बाहर बात करके घर पहुँचते हैं तो आप सोचिए कि क्या मीनिंग प्लस कितना मीनिंगफुल वो कन्वर्सेशन था आप पाएंगे कि पूरा वैक्यूम था इसी तरीके के एडियोटिक कन्वर्सेशन हमारे लाइफ में हो रहे हैं बिकॉज वी आर डिवाइड अप अवर रूट्स वी आर डिवाइड अप अवर पर्पज सो वेटिंग फॉर गोडो इज अनदर ड्रामा विच इज ऑफ दिस जॉनर एंड प्रेजेंट्स टू ट्रैम्स इन अ वेस्ट प्लेस फ्रूटलेसली एंड ऑल बट होपलेसली वेटिंग फॉर एन अन आइडेंटिफाइड पर्सन गोडो which which is pronounced as god o oh, at times maybe they are waiting for god i don't know who may or may not exist and with whom they sometimes think they remember that they may have an appointment as one of the remarks nothing happens nobody comes nobody goes it's awful this nothing happens nobody comes Nobody goes. It's awful. This eternal echo from the drama waiting for Godo still has vibrations because we also feel nothing is happening to our life. The PSC का form भर दिए हैं सात साल से. Appointment नहीं. We are waiting for something. So nothing happens in our life. Nothing happens. कुछ thrill, कुछ नया rejuvenation नहीं होता है. कोई नया पर्पज नहीं मिलता है सो दिस स्टेटमेंट नथिंग हैपेंस नो बडी कम्स नो बडी गोज इट्स ऑफुल इज वॉट दिनोपसिस इज देंट्रल आइडिया ऑफ दिस दिस वेटिंग दिस थिएटर ऑफ एब्जर्ड टेकिंग फ्रॉम द ड्रामा वेटिंग फॉर गॉड टेकिंग फ्रॉम दैट प्ले लाइक मोस्ट वर्क इन दिस मोड द प्ले इज एब्जर्ड in the double sense that it is grotesquely comic and also irrational and non consequential kahi bhi lete nahi karta hai it is a parody not only of the traditional assumptions of western culture but of the conventions and generic forms of traditional drama the lucid but eddying and pointless dialogue is often funny and pratfalls and other modes of slapstick are used to project the alienation and tragic anguish of human existence but typically beckett's characters carry on even if in a life without purpose trying to make sense of the senseless and to communicate the uncommunicable this is this is very important to note i would like to once again restate this statement that the beckett's characters carry on even if in a life without purpose trying to make sense of the senseless we in a daily life also trying to make sense of the senseless there is no sense in that but even then we are trying to make sense out of it and to communicate the uncommunicable jo kaha nahi ja sakta usko kehne ki koshish karne ki vyarth mein apna samay jaya karte hain wittgenstein has said which cannot be said must not be said but we are trying to say that which 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 should not be said and which cannot be said this is where we are just trying to wind away our time and we are trying to communicate the incommunicable so and another contributors of this theater of absurd is the another french playwright of the absurd was jo uh, jean genet and then uh, who combined absurdism and diabolism some of the early dramatic works of the englishman like harold pinter and american edward elby are in similar mode the plays of tom stoppard such as rosencrantz and guildenstern are dead published in 1966 and the travesties published in 1974 exploit the devices of absurdist theater more for comic than philosophical ends so my dear friends now before i Uh, conclude this uh, lecture i would like to uh, make you jot down the important features of absurd drama number 1 absurd drama represents the disorientation of living in an unfriendly and hostile universe after world war second this world had become so unfriendly and hostile that it becomes one of the features of the absurd drama 
and it represents a disorientation of living in an unfriendly world. Second, it is a theater of situation as against a theater of sequential events. So it is a theater of situation. There is no sequential events, there is no sequential plots in it. So our life has become situational. Our life has, is, has lost uh, its, its moment in sequence. That so is a drama. You know? We never know what will happen next. That is why we have become very situational. Now, so is a drama. The third, the action in an absurd drama does not tell a story but presents a pattern of images designed to reflect the perplexity of man's existence in an incomprehensible world. We cannot comprehend this world today. And then there is no plotted story in the traditional sense in such plays. They lack formal logic and conventional structure. There is no logic and there is no conventional structure in the theatre of absurd. Never try to find out any logic in it. Never try to find out any structure in it. Got it? Hmm? Number five. The plays often depict the emptiness and nothingness of life. Eugene Inesco notes that, to quote, the last decisive moment of the play should be the expression of absence. The last this is a moment of the play should be the expression of absence. Because in our life, everything, if there is anything, it is absence. For we, that, you have to turn are, off everything. We are absolutely absent. So, this is where. Now, sixth, the characters are depicted as being aimless and lost in a world that is beyond their comprehension. These characters in this theater of absurd are absolutely aimless. And they are lost in a world that is beyond their comprehension. They cannot comprehend what is the, where they are, why are they, in a position they are. They are incapable of rational thought and action and are often portrayed as automatons who can speak only in cliches. So they are usually flat characters. You know? Seven. Sometimes the characters are depicted as being terrorized by some external force or person. For instance, in Peter's The Birthday Party, published in 1957, Stanley is intimidated by Goldberg and Macon. In some absurd plays, characters are shown against the backdrop of a world created by science. So an excellent example of this is uh, UNESCO's Rhinosaurus, published in 1959, in which uh, Biusi uh, finds himself the only surviving human being in a world full of rhinosaurus. So number eight, the eighth feature of this, the theater of absurd is the dialogue is pointless and at times funny because our day-to-day -day dialogue has also become pointless, isn't it? Jage ho, mobile se punche ne, do blue tick ho ra hai. Even then you are asking jage ho, abe nahi mein so ra ho. Aisa kaise ho sakta hai? The pointless dialogues, there is no meaning in it. 80% of our conversation, you will see and realize that absolutely pointless. So, and uh, the ninth carrier feature of this is that, that the slapstick is often a part of the drama. The lot of humor is there. So this was the, you know, uh, features of uh, theater of absurd and my dear friends, if you dot on all these nine points and you mention all the writers, what was the content, what was the historical background, who coined this, your total answer of the, on the theater of absurd gets completed. Thank you very much friends for your valuable time. Thank you. See you again in the next video.